When making macrame pieces, especially with satin cord, I tend to use the, the cement which is available on the Jewelry Maker website. Um, it's not always in stock, but keep your eyes peeled and uh, it's generally on most of the time. Um, I've heard many viewers um, use a product called E6000. Now this is an industrial strength glue, don't, don't let that put you off. Um, and it's suitable for, for glass, for wood, for leather, all sorts of material. And it actually dries clear. Unfortunately, it's not a product that we're currently stocking. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it in the future. Um, and this, this is, a, a, again, it, it stops the satin from changing colour. Um, you can always use dark colours, the dark navy blues or the black satin like that, um, and you won't see any difference at all. But for the lighter colours, either the, the E6000 or there will just be a tiny bit of discolouring at the end of the macrame. As far as gluing technique goes, um, I think I've demonstrated on the show a, a couple of times that um, when you come to the end of your macrame pieces, you'll notice, especially with the square knots, that you have two little wells at the end of your work where you make the knots. What I tend to do is fill those little wells with glue in the front and then flip your piece of work over and then fill the wells at the back. It'll only take two or three minutes to dry and then you'll be safe to cut away your ends and you'll have your, your finished piece of macrame. Past experience with, with using wire for macrame pieces with pearls, um, no problem at all. Um, I tend to find the size of the holes that the jewelry maker beads have, you could probably get between a 0.25 and a 0.6 millimeter through the pearls. One little tip to remember with pearls is unlike the drill for the gemstones which are drilled from both sides in both directions, the jewelry maker pearls, including shell pearls, seem to have an entrance drill hole and an exit drill hole. Obviously they don't want to repeat drill because they don't want any of the nacre. To, to dislodge. So you'll always find on a pearl you have an entrance hole and an exit hole. So have a good look at your pearl before you actually thread using the wire and make sure that you found the entrance hole, put the wire through and you should be able to get the wire through and out the exit hole, no problem at all. Um, I've been a crafter as long as I can remember, right from teenage years. I've always had a dabble at some sort of art and craft, whether it's, it's greeting card making, cross stitch. Um, I even went through a phase of mosaicing any surface I could possibly find. So it was mirror frames, coffee table tops, flower pots, you name it, I tried to mosaic it. Um, I have, I've had a, a little dabble with jewellery making in the past, but only using glass and wooden beads. And um, as you all know, I've discovered jewellery making nearly three years ago now, and, um, and it's just an amazing, amazing concept working with genuine gemstones. And I have to say, hand on heart, this is the longest hobby that I've ever had in my career of crafting. Um, as far as my favorite technique goes with macrame, it has to be the wire work Celtic bangle. I could make them all day. Um, and it, it definitely features on the, on the workshops that we do. We start off using hemp and all sorts of materials. And in the afternoon, as a final flourish in that last hour, we hit wire, we use 0.1 millimeter and we also use 0.4 or 0.6 to make the really nice Celtic brangles as we know now them as. So yeah, that, that's my, that's my all-time favorite at the moment, but you know, that may change in the next few months. So when making uh, bracelets, especially gentlemen's jewelry, um, with one solitary stone in the middle, um, some of the problems that viewers have is the drill hole size, and they can only find that they can use beading thread or elastic to actually go through the bead. Um, a way of getting through this, which I've recently discovered, is if you had a solitary bead in the middle of your of the bracelet, I call them a watch face bracelet, you would use beading thread as your lazy strand. And try to see if you can get as many strands of beading thread through as you, as you can. Sometimes you can get two, sometimes three or four, even five or six. So as many beading thread strands as you possibly can through the middle of the, of the bead. Then you start with your macrame. Now you need two pieces of leather or suede. And always make sure that you leave about, probably about eight inches of two lengths. You definitely need two lengths of, of the leather. Um, start about eight inches from the end, so you have, a, in effect, a couple of tails. Start your macrame, um, probably three inches before the bead, cage the bead, and then three inches afterwards, and stop. So you've got six inches of macrame with your bead in the center. At each end of your now leathered macrame work, pop a couple of crimp beads on the beading thread and squish them, so really, really give them a tight squish. On top of those, those crimp beads, place a crimp cover on each of the crimps. Okay, so in effect now you have the bead, you have three inches of the macrame, and then you have two crimp beads squished, covered with a crimp cover. And at the end of this, you can now cut off 
your lazy strand of beading thread and you won't be able to see it at all. Now bear in mind at the beginning I mentioned you leave eight inches of rubber or leather or suede and eight inches at the other end. So you've got your beaded section and you have your two eight inch sections of leather. Fold them back over each other and turn them into a slip knot which features on a couple of the DVDs now. I think it features on my Macrame DVD certainly and also on Debbie's. And I also think that uh, it does feature on one of the, on the how-tos on the website. So bead in the centre, three inches of macrame each side, crimp beads, crimp cover, cut off the beading thread and use your tails to fold back over themselves to make a conventional slip knot. As far as inspiration in my jewellery career goes, it has to be undoubtedly colour. I am a huge fan of colour. I'm very orderly with my colour. As viewers of the show may know, if, if I have a strand of mixed colours, I do unfortunately have to grade them. It's quite time consuming, but it's well worth it at the end. Um, being a keen gardener and horticulturist, uh, again, it, it's, it, we always go back to nature. I mean, Mother Nature never gets it wrong. She puts colours together that match. She puts colours together that combine perfectly. And as we know, all of our gemstones are Mother Nature's product and even what she says goes. My first jewellery maker creation, and it's one of my all-time favourite pieces now, and I create them time after time after time, are memory wire bracelets. I think memory wire is one of my favourite mediums to work with, and especially with chips and nuggets, which again, I'm a huge fan of. My first ever piece was with Jewellery Maker, and I, I still remember it now, and I still have it at home. I don't really want to part with it. There was aquamarine, crackled quartz, and white pearl. A four-strand bangle around the wrist. You can't beat them. They're one of my top sellers on my craft stall, and uh, they're so easy to make. There's no fiddly clasp. They're ideal presents and gifts, because there's no fiddly clasp. The one size fits all. So my first piece, and my all-time favorite, has to be the aquamarine memory wire bangle. One of the questions that I'm constantly asked is um, people have problems when they're making macrame twist knot. Now the, the issue, it all goes down to the fact that the, you start getting the corkscrew effect happening and the helix, as I call it, wants to turn and it wants to turn and it becomes more difficult to tie the knots. So this is just a little tip to keep that, that helix or that corkscrew nice and uniform without suddenly having a square knot in the middle of your twist knot, which is where people have the problems with. So down on my board here, um, I've got an inch of the twist knot. And as you can see, what's happening is the top, one of the cords is desperately trying to flip over. So as you can see, it, it wants to go across. So the mistake that most people make is they keep continuing to, 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 uh, to do their twist stitch and they get in a bit of a pickle in the middle here. So what I do, as soon as it starts wanting to turn over, it wants to go across, okay? Naturally, it wants to turn is you take your right hand strand and you feed it underneath your lazy, in turn automatically flips the left hand strand over to the right. So we've, we've, we've swapped strands once by going underneath. Um, the mistake now that people make is they then continue with their, with their half twist stitch, with, a, with their twist knot, and they suddenly find that they have a square knot in the middle, and that's when the problems start. So the tip is, you flip the strands once and then you repeat it. So your right thread goes underneath the lazy strand and your left strand then flips over again. So again, you've performed a really nice tight helix pattern at the top and you're back to where you started to continue with your twist knot on the left or the right hand side, whichever you decided to start with at the beginning.